Hello, students. Uh, in the last lecture, we were at the historical research. That historical research means uh, the historical sources like documents or some archives, the research which will be done on those documents or some past event which has happened in the history. That is called as actually historical research. Now, we have also uh, just started with the conclusive research in the last lecture. And conclusive research, which is actually meant uh, by the mainly, it should reach to uh, some conclusion uh, at the end. Or you can say it is conclusion oriented. Now, this conclusion oriented uh, or and decision oriented, there are two types of the research which we are going to see. So in this decision oriented research, it is always for the need of decision maker. And the researcher in this case is not free to get on the research according to its own preference. Means if I want to do, uh, means while doing research, I got that some another point where also I can focus or I can go further to do the research. I cannot do that because it should be according to the decision maker. Decision is already given that you have to do the or you have to focus your research on this, 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 this point, not anything else. And I cannot go for that. So that's why it is called as decision oriented research. And in conclusion oriented research, it is mainly meant to provide uh, information that is useful in reaching to the conclusion or you can say decision making. So uh, there is a little bit difference between these two. So some conclusion has to uh, or after research some valuable conclusion has to be given and uh, based on that decision can be taken or decision can be made to do the or further to apply that particular solution or not. So that is what is the difference between these two. Then the next we are going to see Uh, I'm going to play one small video which will give you an idea about research. Just listen to the video. My research journey. Ah, reassuring. When I received my diagnosis, I felt alone and afraid. I didn't know what would happen to me. I felt as though there was no hope. One day, my clinician asked me if I would be interested in hearing more about research. At first, I was unsure. I pictured people in white lab coats. I worried about what it might involve. But I thought nothing to lose by finding out more. My clinician reassured me all research is voluntary and I can change my mind at any time. They asked if I'd like to chat to a researcher. I thought it sounded new and different. Hey everyone. The next day, I got a call from a researcher. They told me research is for everyone. It turns out there are lots of different types of research studies to take part in. The researchers support you all the way through. S. Shaping your NHS. I thought, what's in it for me? They explained, without research, there is no change. Research helps us develop new and better ways to support people like me. It feels good to know you are part of future change. It may also be a way to access further support, not available on the NHS yet. E. Engaging. There are many different ways you can take part in research, and you'll always be given time to think and talk about it with family and friends. A. Action. I decided to take action. Before my first appointment, I felt excited and nervous. The researcher let me know what to expect, which put me at ease, and I had the opportunity to ask any questions. Ah, oh, rewarding. Research is interesting. You're part of a process. It can be a chance to learn new skills, gain information, and talk about important issues. It can be reassuring to know others had similar experiences. 
Research can open doors to new friendships and opportunities. With research, it's not just about my condition. The focus is on living, how best to live. C. Contributing. I felt I was making a difference. I soon realised my unique experience was what they were interested in, and I was the expert on this. I enjoyed the chance to chat and always looked forward to my follow-up visits. H. Hope now and to the future. Research gives us hope now and to the future. Every person taking part in research counts, and your views really do matter. Would you like to change the way the future looks for you and others? Speak to our friendly research team. So I hope you all must have enjoyed this video. This video was focused on what is research. The basic thing, what is research, how the interest in the research can get cultivated and how it will benefit you at the end. Now the next part is on the research problem. So what is a research problem? Whenever you are formulating a research problem, it is very important that you need to ask a question regarding that particular problem. And whenever a question is asked, that question must get formulated uh, correctly. So it must have whatever a question you are forming, it must be a good question, not a bad question. Or uh, always remember that uh, it is very hard to formulate a good answer to the bad question. And a question well asked is always a question which you can give or which can be answered well, right? So uh, for research also, it is like that, that whatever research problem you are going to select, it is related to the good question. If your research problem is not correct, it means whatever question you have asked to select that particular problem must be, must not be a good question. Now, what is the difference between bad question or good question? For example, uh, why do some carpo, uh, corporations pollute the water if they aren't regulated? This is a question which is actually a bad question because you can just see that uh, why question? If you, you can ask the same question but in a different way. Like a good question can be, how do government regulations prevent corporations from polluting the water? Same thing you are saying, but it is in a different way. So just by changing the why question to a how question, you are asking for specific instead of vague opinion. So whatever opinion you are giving is a specific opinion, not a vague opinion. So likewise, in research, you cannot ask a vague question or you, can you cannot select a vague topic for your study. Or another question we can take, uh, like a bad question, for example, first one, has a population of world increased in the past century? Right? Instead, if we ask the same question in this way, which can, which can be a good question, that is, what factors have influenced population growth in the uh, fastest growing countries, right? Now, it's easy to write a research paper or do a project about something that is not controversial always, but uh, you likely won't be creating anything new, right? So instead, ask a question, uh, research question about something that has multiple sides. So whenever you are selecting a research problem, Always try to ask the question in such a way that it always have uh, many sides. In that way, the research you do and details you include will have more impact always because multiple dimensions are there, right? For example, are illicit drugs bad for kids? Now, everyone knows that it is bad. A good question is, that was the bad question. Good question can be asked that 
which effective education strategies prevent drug abuse in teens so that can be a good problem also now as i said that everyone knows that the illicit drugs are bad for kids but people will disagree about which education strategies actually help means how you can educate them uh, that this uh, that is the another question is what the good question which is uh, what we said that which effective education strategies prevent drug abuse in teen so now there will be difference of opinion in the education strategies so whenever such situation is there uh, you, to prove your point that these are the education policies which are good you need to dig for a lot of data right you need to prepare a lot of backup proof of the data uh, which will give your questions answer correctly and thus you can say that these 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 are the education policies which are good still few people will not be agree but with the proof with the data you can prove that these are the educational strategies which can prevent drug abuse in teens so here there is some scope that you can do some research on it the first question that oh, are illicit drugs <laughs> bad for kids it is bad the answer is yes directly so what is more to search on it right so it is very important when and how you are selecting your research problem now to select your particular research problem these four points are very important that is scientific thinking first you should know that what is a research problem then you must know how to select a research problem then what is the source of your research problem means from where that problem has arisen and how you will define your research problem these all five criteria are very important whenever you are refining your research problem so the first thing that is scientific writing so in scientific writing or scientific thinking sorry not writing it's scientific thinking first question arises that what is scientific thinking now or what is the meaning of scientific thinking scientific thinking and curiosity is a very important part of the research scientific thinking is actually a type of knowledge seeking every in seeking uh, involving intentional information seeking including uh, asking questions testing hypotheses making observations recognizing patterns and making inferences so whenever a scientific thinking is there the first uh, thing which comes in mind that there this, this scientific thinking must include what first question should get asked right then it should involve the hypothesis testing right it whatever questions you will ask mainly those are based on observations right so observations are very important what when you are observing you may find some uh, specific pattern which you can say recognition pattern and then making uh, inferences that is then you can make some conclusion based on that so that's why uh, scientific thinking is important and actually that is what is the meaning of scientific thinking that how you can think scientifically so the scientific thinking starts with the facts and continually returns to facts to test and verify the hypothesis so it will start with the facts in the sense you will observe something that is what is happening in the environment besides you and you are trying to observe it you have some questions in your mind and you are trying to find out some answer for this now that question which is getting arised by continuous observation that is also called as scientific thinking that is a part of scientific thinking until and unless you don't arise you don't have any question or a question doesn't get arised in your mind you cannot try to find out or you will not go to find out some solution so that is the first step of the scientific thinking and which is very very important and then after observation continuously you will return to the fact yes this phenomenon is is getting happen in this way and then you will 
say that this phenomenon is happening in this way because of this, this, this. And that will be your hypothesis. And you will try to find out the reasons for that. And then you will verify the hypothesis. Yes, because of these, these, these reasons, this particular phenomenon is taking place in this way. So this is actually called as scientific uh, thinking. Then how you can develop the scientific thinking? To develop scientific thinking, actually, uh, you can just say that uh, science is a systematic study of the natural world through observations and then through investigation, reasoning and testing, actually you can develop the scientific thinking. And uh, this thinking can be developed by using science as a discipline to further scientific knowledge. So just consider science as one discipline and just go investigate, the, find out the reasoning and just test your hypothesis and at the end definitely uh, that all sum up of all will be the scientific thinking and it will get developed the scientific thinking will get developed in this way into a researcher now if you want to see what is an example of scientific thinking uh, an example of scientific thinking is um, that how scientists or researchers follow the scientific methods right now, to follow the particular method for particular experiment, what they have to do? They have to first ask questions, right? After that, they need to make observations. A question arises in front of them. Then regarding to that question, they will, they will try to observe the phenomenon which is happening continuously. Then on the basis of question and observation, they will form an hypothesis and prediction, right? Then they will... Uh, find out methods which could test their hypothesis and then hypothesis testing will come into the picture once they do a particular experimentation they will collect the data they will analyze the data and at the end they will come to the conclusion so these uh, scientific methods are generally involved when scientific thinking is there that is asking questions making observations than forming hypothesis and production, testing that particular hypothesis with different methods and coming to the conclusion on the basis of data get collected. Now, uh, what is a research problem? Now, on the basis of scientific thinking, you are going to propose or formulate a research problem. Now, what exactly or what is so you can define it as a scientific problem. Now, this scientific problem or research problem means it involves identifying a specific question or issue that a researcher seeks to address through a research study. So, it, it is nothing but a problem, right, which got identified by the researcher and by studying that particular problem, researcher want to find some solution, right? Now, research problem can be defined uh, by identifying a broad research topic. And uh, so first, what the researcher need to do, it has to select a broad research topic, then conduct a literature review or literature survey so that the researcher could able to understand well about the research topic. Then researcher could refining the research question because once you do the you may uh, prepare uh, some problem you may have some problem in your mind but once you do literature survey there might be a situation that few study which you don't know but it has been already done and then you need to refine your research problem according to the study is uh, study which has been already done right so uh, that's why refining the research question is very important or research problem is very important. And then you have to develop a hypothesis. So when you are, you are doing all this, it means you are actually uh, preparing a good research problem. So always the research problem in general uh, refers to some uh, difficulty. Difficulty in the sense, um, it's 
it's the again another one is problem only that some problem researcher is experiencing or a group of people are experiencing and uh, it can be in the context of theory or practical it can be a theoretical situation or it can be a real life practical situation right and a researcher want to find solution for the same so to do this to uh, prepare a good research problem what is required inquiring mind means again the mind or the researcher which has always curious and has questions in his mind and imagination the researcher could able to imagine that if this happened then what can be the well, problems can get arise and if i want to solve a particular problem in this way if this could be the solution how that solution could fit or fix that particular problem so that imagination researcher should do it before and then uh, the researcher is always having an eye in inconsistencies and inadequacies in the current major so researcher should always know that these problem is there then these are the solution which are available but those solutions are not foolproof they are not completely solving that problem and what if i do this kind of research then what solution i will give and will that solution will really solve the problem so all this when is sum up when a researcher think and create uh, and uh, propose a problem that will be a good research problem so um for example if we want to see the example of good research problem suppose this is the research problem that is how does social media uses uh, affect the academic performance of high uh, of high school students so the problem is how does social media uses affect the academic performance of high school student right so here this research problem is specific it is measurable and it is relevant it has all these three characteristics so this particular research problem is a good research problem now it is specific why it is specific because it focuses on a particular area of interest right which is the impact of social media on academic performance so it is a very focused and specific uh, problem in a sense it is not a general problem it is a specific problem and it may now it also measures the researcher it also is measurable in the sense the researcher can collect data on social media uses and academic performance to evaluate the relationship between two variables now there are two variables one is academic performance another is relation uh, another is high school student so it can be measured that how the social media is affecting on the high school students performance and that's why it is a good research problem because you can measure the relationship right and it is relevant because it addresses a current and important issue why it is so important because it is a social issue right and uh, this particular issue is need to get solved manje jasa kala chi garaj hai tasa ha problem hai right so this problem is like the problem which need to get solved right now because it is affecting very badly to the high school students right so it is relevant as it is addressing a current and important issue right uh, that affects the high school students so to conduct research on this problem the researcher could use various method now this problem is in such a way that you can use various methods now which kinds of method this researcher can use such as surveys it can take interviews of so many students parents there are different pillars right it can be used and statistical analysis can be done for the academic record so how it is affected it is affected on the performance whatever social media use is going to affect on the performance of the student so performance how it is measured by the academic records so thus you can analyze the academic record you can take the interviews you can take the surveys apply statistical analysis 
and find out the conclusion. Now, the results of the study will provide insights into the relationship automatically between the social media uses and academic performance, which could now where it is applicable or what is the use of it? What is the significance of this uh, particular research? Then it will or it could help educator and parents also to develop effective strategies for managing social media use among the students. So thus it is very important that it could help the parents and uh, social media also that how it should get effectively managed. Now, what are the components of research problem? So whenever is research problem is actually uh, decided or you are trying to decide a research problem, these are the points which you should take into the consideration. The first one is topic. So how you are going to select the topic, whether your topic will be very specific or general topic. General topic is always uh, important actually preferred why because when you are taking general uh, topic you can as you are getting the results you can shift to different uh, allied problems but if you take any very specific problem and if you are not getting results for that particular problem it will be very difficult for you to get shifted to another problem because that will be altogether some another issue and another problem and another research topic so instead, if you take some general question and uh, that will be more helpful for the research so that it can explore many allied topics related to that. Then research question. Whenever you are forming a research question for a particular research problem, a very clear and specific question that researcher should able to ask and try to seek a particular answer or um, the researcher could able to investigate properly for that particular question to get the correct answer, right? So thus topic first you have to take into the consideration, then the research question you have to take into the consideration. The next is objective. Now uh, objective is the researcher should state the objective in such a way that it should define the purpose of research, what exactly the aim of the researcher, what the what that particular researcher want to achieve with this particular objective and what are the expected outcome. So by doing this this research, what what is the expected outcome is will be there with this research problem that you need to add into your objective itself, right? Then the hypothesis where the researcher could find out the relationship between the variables, right? And it should test the hypothesis and find out whether the hypothesis is getting accepted or rejected. Then variables, of course, variables means the different studies which it will do uh, it will measure, it could able to measure the variable factors. It could able to modify some of the factors or some of the elements of the research so that it could give some new solution. Then to do this, it has to use proper methods, that is methodology. What is the overall approach towards the methodology? Which types of methods he or she should use while doing a research? Then the scope and uh, scope and limitation. So uh, your research problem should define the boundaries and parameters of the research that till this it could able to solve the problem beyond which you need to do the further research. Then which points you should include, which points should be excluded. That will tell the scope and scope of that particular problem and limitation of that particular problem. And at the end, what is potential of that particular problem? And this much problem it could able to solve. But while solving this problem, 
my research will have these these limitations that also should be clear when a research problem is getting solved or is a research problem you are preparing right and at the end significance that overall what will be the impact of your solution on the society and how it is going to um, give a very good uh, solution for the society or how it is going to add up into the existing knowledge so whenever a research problem you have to create or whenever you have to propose a research problem at that time it is expected that you have to take consideration a general subject as a topic or general area as your topic then form a research question in a very clear and specific way to that you can get the correct and specific answer with the investigation then objective should be in such a way that it could able to tell the purpose of your research and it could achieve your aim prepare hypothesis in such a way that it could tell the relationship uh, between the variables variables you could able to measure those are you could able to study and measure and modify those variables now to do this you can use different methods so uh, you should know very well that which type of method you are going to use scope and limitation what is scope of your research what are the limitations of your research and what is the significance of your research problem you must know it well now uh, with this we will stop it here itself bye bye take care we will meet we will soon meet into the next lecture thank you take care